Alright, here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Ah, jeez. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. My name is Bandow and you are on twitch.tv slash Bandow or youtube.com slash watch percent, uh, question mark equals V, sorry, question mark V equals, uh, Q, uh, hopefully it starts with a Q. If it starts with a Q, I'm amazing. I don't know, it's, it's a string of numbers and letters and, and uppercase numbers and letters. Uh, today is the 9th of May, 2022. It is a blisteringly cold day in Sydney. It was like 16 degrees Celsius. It was a scorcher of a cold one. Very, very cold. Um, and it rained a little bit. Not crazy rain, but a little bit of rain. I've been uh, <laughs> getting, uh, what was it, Ill illness relapse. What's the term? When, uh, like, uh, okay, so last week I felt fine, but... The week before I was feeling absolute trash and today I'm feeling like the upset stomach from going on but that's not gonna stop me right now because I feel like hey take your mind off it you know get 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 into the zone and play a chill game that you enjoy a lot so today I will be playing some Super Mario let's let's see if I can I can jump into it in one fell swoop and get the audio as well while we're at it there we go Super Mario Galaxy 2 for the Nintendo Wii. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the last stream. Where's the sensor? Where's the sensor bar? I tested this earlier. It's uh, I'm not having a field day. Let's let's disconnect the controller. Try it, try it again. I had a swell time with the with the um. Nope, oh, no go. Let's let's give it an unplug. You're gonna hear some Windows noises. That's that's me. It's not. It's not. It's not you. It's me. It was working a moment ago. Cause uh, so for reference, I'm running this through um Dolphin with the Dolphin Bar. Still no go. Still no go. Oh, they might have detected me for a brief moment. Oh, there we go. Am I too close? Ah, oh, I'm sitting too close to my monitor. There you go. That's my problem. Let's test my corners. Yep. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Some some uh, some bootleg bootstrap recording. But nah, everything's all good. So in the last stream, this was the start of the video game, uh, where we're introduced to the face ship. We're introduced to a bunch of mechanics, a bunch of levels. Uh, we have the mail toad here, constantly giving you these wonderful letters, um, with five one-ups. Uh, for reference. When you turn off the game, Mario loses all his lives. So all 50 lives I got at the end of the last stream doesn't count anymore. But that's okay because this game is a bit of a baby's game. It's a bit of an easy one. Uh, so in the last stream, there was a lot of levels done. Um, I didn't even realize as well, off the top of my head, some of these levels don't have comets. Like, uh, particularly this... Oh. Oh, very important. Very, very, very important. Whoosh. You gotta get those 10 star bits. 8. 8 star bits. Some levels, like Fluffy Bluff here, don't have comets. Uh, particularly, yeah. It's, galaxies will only have 3 stars or 2 stars. And sometimes that third star is a comet. Which, in the case of Spin Dig, it will be. We haven't even gotten to the comets yet, so... I'm, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. But... We'll see some pretty soon enough. So, it, yeah, in the last stream, pretty much... We're about halfway through World 2. Uh, I've done Honey Balloon Galaxy, which means, in theory, I could head into the Bowser level. But we've got two more levels that I'd like to show off. Let's start with a more traditional level. You know, tra traditional for how this game goes. This is Cosmic Cove Galaxy. This one is a personal favorite of mine. It's a little understated as well. Twin Falls Hideaway. So right off the top, you're looking at it going, hmm, water level, is it going to be bad? But it's got this lovely music, this harp going on. I really, really want to know how people play the harp. Because um, I'm trying to, like, you know, figure out guitar, and it's like, man, I I get too lax on the strings sometimes. I don't need that, because I need to 
another thingy here. So yeah, you can swim or you can use the shell. This is a mechanic straight out of the first game, but the shell is effectively like a little guiding thing. You can hold Z, put in some brake lights, and you can point at these guys and they get a little spooked. So something nice. Uh, this is probably a level people will point at when they say uh, this is why Galaxy 2 is worse than Galaxy 1 because of its linearity. It's like, yep, here is a corridor. Here is a definitely a corridor of a level. You can do this fun jump, which uh, pops you in the water again, just like a little bit further down. You can jump up here to, gar to grab another shell. But ultimately, your goal is to just head forward through this uh, planet here. Um, but yeah, no, people will, will bring this level up in particular, uh, and in contrast with, uh, what's the, the one? Beach Bowl? Gotta grab some coins. That was some good, good coins right there. Speaking of coins, how many coins do I need, Mr. Hungry Luma, who's right here? I love the way that they do lead you over here, though. It's a lot more of an open area. 15 coins. I think we got this. Just gotta find some more coins out here. And you want to make sure you do it before you hit that one button up there. Um, let's see. Who'll be hiding more coins? Are you hiding some coins? You're hiding some star bits. There's bound to be some coins around, including this comet metal. Let's uh, let's grab that. I wanted to grab the uh shell there uh but yeah yeah nah uh so uh so yeah it's a uh, it's a blankets out kind of day it's definitely a keep warm don't uh don't go outside for too long or rug up or do whatever do whatever you must uh make sure you, you keep well in this cool weather um unless you're in you know the northern hemisphere in which case uh probably having scorches right now uh the hot kind um and that's cool for you. Uh, I'm jealous. I would prefer to be melting in sweat than to be freezing in... Indoors, I guess. There we go. It's not too bad to get the coins, just making sure you don't hit that button. Because that button, you know, when I get to it, you'll see what, what happens. But let's feed this hungry Luma. He's a very hungry boy. That's the stuff I'm so full. I'm gonna transform! Ah! <laughs> and he heads off into space. Aren't we all in space, technically? To form... What is that? A planet, I guess. <laughs> this is the second game. You think you have caught on by now. That's okay. And on this planet, we have... Think you could catch me? I'd like to see you try it, boyoing. Oh, boy. Everyone's favorite mechanic, trying to catch the rabbit. Now the rabbit is crazy fast. Whoops! And you got to deal with all these dudes. This is this kind of planet makes me have that feeling that they know it's a sequel, so it's a little bit trickier. Your goal here is to detect this button here. This is actually what the other button does, it's, uh, not temporarily. It allows you to skate, which means one, you can kill these guys with just a kick. Uh, you can spin to speed up while skating, but it's a, a little precarious. I'm just gonna... Oh, I'm gonna go for it. There you go. You wanna be a little careful. Oh, hey, you got me to take this boy. And here we have yet another power star. As they say in France. In France? Who knows? Let's have the chat on, on my uh, on my dash so I can peer at it cautiously. You know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, yeah, nah. The um, yeah, the uh, the illness is not like. I mean, I'd, I'd rather a lower illness than an upper illness. An upper illness just makes you feel terrible. A lower illness just makes you feel anxious. You know what I mean? Like you don't. It's not comfy, but it's not. You know, you can think and you can speak. So. That's all fine. What's up? Twin Falls Hideaway. Haven't I seen this level already? Yeah, that's right. We're back in. Ah, da 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 da. What's up? 
Second worst, same as the first. Uh, but yeah, no, so, uh, yeah, a handful of the levels, um, potentially this one, if I saw that correctly, uh, might only have, uh, well, sorry, they might have three stars, and the Comet Medal, while, yeah, you, you want to, you know, you need to get the Comet Medal for every level, you don't actually get a Comet Star right away. They're going to be necessary for very later on, but we'll get into that. And especially, we'll get into that when comets are introduced in this game, which I am amazed they haven't yet been introduced. I was having comets, you got comets after the, um, the second hub in the first game, right? I remember doing the, um, the, the Dino Piranha uh, speedrun, like, pretty early on. Maybe it was during the first hub. So anyway, your goal is to hit this button. We have frozen the planet. Yippee, it's frozen solid. Use the, the, the stick and shake to start ice skating. People who shake with the nunchuck and not the Wii remote. So yeah, so you can do the skating. It's the same skating mechanic as before. The reason why you want to, you know, not do this before getting the coins is because how do you get most of the coins? There's a few coins still available, but not all of them. Let's wall jump up this waterfall that's now frozen. And that's the star. I guess that's, maybe that's the other thing people will say. It's like, oh, it's linear, because like, the star was right there then. It's not the, the crazy longest level out there. But it's a nice fun one. And now you're looking over there going, what is happening over there? We'll have to save that for another star, won't we? Yeah. Twenty-two. That was a very quick one as well. One forty-three, forty-three. So there's another middle star. Let's let's grab that middle star. Very important. This is exploring the cosmic can uh, cavern, not canyon, cavern. Now you're looking at it going ah. Nintendo's weird fascination with two-dimensional levels. They they just went right back to two-dimensional levels, and this game's got a lot of them. I don't think there were really too many. But Bloomer wants you to get them out of here. Now the planet is still frozen over from the last level. In fact, we, I forgot to even talk to this guy. This little guy's trapped in there, so everyone's out looking for the key. Find the key, he says. So I like this idea of, um, you know, you get to go through the same linear start, but the level is totally different this time around, because you gotta do the skating. So suddenly the enemies are frozen, these barricades are not really in the way, you've got these little ice thingies in the way, uh, this whole platform's changed a little bit to just be a pipe. Everyone is searching inside. And out he is. Ground pound and away we go, sliding down the slope. Uh, I like this 2D water because, uh, obviously it's like a block in space, it has to have a front and a back, but... I guess given the angle, it's convincing enough to not need, not need that, but you know what I mean, like, there's a lot of, like, cool bits involving using 3D in a 2D context. Look at this penguin, what is he doing? Whenever you see a switch, spin next to it to flip it on. You never know what will happen. He says next to a coin. Uh, this guy wants you to do a dive, so you just hit that and just go down. He goes back up though because he's uh, incredibly buoyant, I guess. We keep swimming, we keep going down, and wouldn't you know, there's a fan propelling you across. Oh look, a switch. I guess they said spin it, so there you go. Uh, oh, gotta watch for the eels. But yeah, I don't know, Nintendo had this kind of fascination with uh, reinvigorating the 2D. There was, a, there was a degree of when 3D started being a thing near the late SNES, and they had games um, for the SNES. They were very, very uh, strict on um, making sure their new games were 3D only, and that, I, especially uh, N64 games. I also love these uh, floating bits of water, by the way. 
it's water, but it's flying in space. It's not even, like, that tough to program, as long as your water is, you know, trying to play by the bounding box of the... Sorry. If, if something is in water, if Mario is just within a, a bounding area. Um, but it's a really cool effect, and, and something that makes a lot of sense, and I'm surprised they didn't do too much of in the first game. I guess it really only makes sense in 3D, in 2D though. It's very hard to visualize uh, swimming in, in uh, 3D when it's not just like a wet bit of ground. So here we have a block of water, which uh, seems to not move Mario while it's moving along, but that's okay. It connects on to another bit of water, which everyone likes more water. A bit of rocks that are- oh, I, I was paying attention. I was watching the rocks in the back and now I'm too far out and Mario doesn't even have the decency to fall into the black hole. He just goes down. Done. That's okay. I was, I was just not paying attention. At least the lives respawn. You don't even have to go this way. You're kind of rough intended to go up where that Goomba is just as a jump, but... You know, they, they provide a couple of options for players. There we go. Alright, back to the rocks that are definitely not that far away from... from Mario, but... I think some of them are in the water. I think that's the effect they're going for. The worst part is the key was right here. I was just right there. Oh, oh, why why was jumping out of trouble? A tr a struggle? A, it's a struggle trouble. A, tr a struggle, if you will. Or a struggle, a better term. Lots of star bits for the hungry person. And wouldn't you know, this pipe leads right back to the Luma. He's very happy that these little bits of uh, octagons respawned. Thanks, it was more humid in there than you think. Listen, man, captivity is not great, but, you know, nothing is worse than the humidity. Oh, who is this fella? Suffocation, I can't go swimming because everything is frozen. Oh, Mario didn't even see that. <laughs> Working on this mission, I'll find a star. I can't keep doing that, sorry. Oh, look, there's a star over there. Yep, I knew it all along. Wow. The glow would be a, a, a bit of a tell. Well, uh, it's over there, and I'm over here. I love these little enemies. They got little little glowy bits. They jump around. All right, so what's the what's the, the, tr the trouble? Well, only one of these spots can be dug over to the other side. Now, if you spotted very carefully, I think it was this one. And if it was not, it would have been the one. It was the one over. You get to play a little bit of mystery roulette. I'm trying to think. Wait a minute. I guess it would have been here. I think it was right in the middle. It's not even the same size platform. Yeah, it's not even the same size hole. You gotta watch out for the Mecha Coopers. Actually, I think you gotta full watch out for them. Maybe this is a rough tutorial into um, telling you that you can ground pound while holding this thing. Because you can't, awkwardly, you can't drop it. So you can't spin. But there's never a need. There's never a need to spin with it. Very purposeful in giving enemies that can be handled. There's one more down here. Oh, look at that, he had the key. Whoops, I dropped the lift key. Break the cage and, uh... Well, wouldn't you know? Nothing happened. How come? Well, you gotta grab the little spinning top. Again. And head over here, where we shall dig into it. And suddenly, oh! There's all the water. It was all there. And we can finally grab... The little star on the little dinghy on top of the planet. And that's a fun galaxy. A couple of little neat water effects, but in, in particular, playing around with the, um... Uh, I, I guess just the idea of having the water floating around in space, as well as also turning it into ice. It's a neat mechanic. Galaxy 1 and 2 just have real special levels. Dude, they feel so special. They, like... 
I feel like I'm discovering something new every single time, even though I've played this game a few times. Hmm, a sassy penguin on board a spaceship? That's a new one on me. Sassy penguin, eh? Well, he seems to want a word with you. I wouldn't keep that one waiting. Let's, let's see what he says. Shake the wear remote when you're in the water for a burst of speed. A lot of penguins don't know that. Uh, little does he tell you it reduces your oxygen, but I guess you'll you'll know it when you do it. Well, that was a neat level. I'll definitely say that. Speaking of neat levels, we've got the Wild Glide Galaxy. Here's a level with a very different twist on, I guess, maybe what you're expecting. Fluzzard's First Flight. There it is. Now look at, look at this guy. I don't know why. I, for the first time I saw this guy, I, I thought it was like ho from Pokemon. He's a little different. And obviously Nintendo does not directly own the rights to Pokemon. They have to ask for them. Galaxy 1, a big galaxy with a lot of levels. Two has far more variety in my opinion. I definitely agree. I think Galaxy 1, the levels are larger and expansive, but there's a bit of overlap and it does play it not safe necessarily, but, um, It'll teach you how to glide. Um, but you know what I mean? Where it's like, I think Galaxy 2 takes the idea of just, you know, giving you a new mechanic like every few minutes. It's great. Alright, okay, here's how you glide. So I love all those little miniature galaxies that have uh, for every single one of the world map. Yeah, the world map is a lot of a nicer touch. I, I prefer it. Um, yeah, you remember riding the manta ray in the last game? This is uh, kind of the same deal. So you tilt the Wii remote left, and the bird turns left. You tilt the Wii remote right. And the, the bird turns turns right, and you've also got to point the remote down to do a nose dive. Also, point up. Yeah, Galaxy 2, they really try to keep it very. Yeah, oh, it's it's great fun. So, glide towards the big sun at the end of the forest. You win, but it won't be easy. All right, well here we go. So the difference compared to the the manta ray is that you're at least pointing the remote towards the screen. I'm not too sure how exactly they handle, uh, the pointing. Because, like, I always, uh, had the feeling of, oh, the Wii Remote doesn't have a gyroscope. But it does, because the, I, I, I mean, not, not the, I know the Wii Remote Plus does, because if you ever play Wii Sports Resort, you know, all, all of that stuff, but, like, there's, there's a handful of games that do require, you know, rely on the tilting of the Wii Remote. I think maybe there's something... Maybe I should have been going through these. Is it one of those I didn't go through? Or is there one right near the end? Well, let's glide down. Let's have a fun time. No, there's one right there. There we go. Let's get that balloon. There's some good stuff. It's... And if you get through all five of those gates little thing at the end reveals the comet medal and there you go that was 69 seconds a you flew you flew even fluzzard looks happy happy here take this star nice flying okay there he goes so <laughs> it's short and simple but it's it's good fun um i i, I didn't miss any i i was secretly too good i i, I don't know man. I feel like uh, instinctively, like my brain does go for the shiny things, even if uh, even if I w wasn't quite watching the whole time. Yeah. Fluzzard's first flight in the Wild Glide Galaxy. But look, oh, wait, no, not yet, <laughs> not yet, no second star just yet. So in that case, let's head over to Bowser's Lava Lair. This is, we're finally here, the second Bowser level. 24 minutes into a stream. Wow. Bowser's big lava power party. Bombastic name, I love it. And wouldn't you know, he's brought the thwomps with him. Uh, this level introduces a mechanic that I honestly think gets a little bit overused in the Bowser levels, which is a little unfortunate, but sure, okay. Yes. So here we are, the Bowser level. What does the Luma have to say here? Oh. I sense a grand star ahead. The way is dangerous though. Be careful. Nope, you gotta watch out for the 
Magic Koopa, who I kicked off the uh, off thing. Is this the first Pulsar in the game? It is! Recurring mechanic from the first game, but... Hey, just grab at it and, and press A. We've got a trampoline. What, a grand star on the boss level? And it's decently not shocking. I know, right? Let's see if we can grab this. That's pretty straightforward. This game introduces so many new ideas, like, you know, reusing the Mario 64 Bowser music yet again. The rendition is great, but, you know, there's, there's somewhat uh, a desire for uh, differently composed music. Make sure you jump on that, so I don't panic. Oh. Hi there, Mr. Captain Toad. Mario, we found a coin for you. <laughs> what? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Who wrote this game? Who, 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 who did this? Hammer Bros? I absolutely hate this Hammer Bros in the original. Like the NES original. But it's not too bad, because it can walk around the hammers. Have a sling star, it goes right up to a little ledge. Let's see if I can grab these coins. Fun coins. There you go, good stuff. I used to always think it was fun, instead of ground pounding this, to just jump it. We'll do the ground pound, it's good fun. Because you can do a jump right to the other end here, you don't have to, like... Oops. Oops, this is gonna get a big awkward. Okay, this is getting very awkward. Okay, this is getting very awkward. I... Mm, this is... Nigh emba embarrassing. Whoops. Okay, okay, we're safe. We're safe. We're safe. Galaxy 1 was 64 plus, uh, plus or Sunshine Plus in terms of level variety. 2 that got a lot more bold. Uh, yeah! I... I'm, okay, okay, this one's one to get me, uh... You know, remove from online discussions. Alright, here's the thing, by the way. Uh, just want to let this guy get back up so you can... Whoops. Oh, I got the thing. Okay, let's dodge him. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Sunshine. Uh, also, here's the new mechanics. So you jump on that little ball, it's got its own gravity, and you can ground pound it to fire it away. At the door, which then a tractor beam comes in, and... Uh, Sucks you in towards the platform. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Sunshine. I find that, like, it's too few levels. What does it tell you over here? Uh, I know it's not much, but please take this star bit. I'm sorry, it's not a one-up mushroom. Uh, it's, it's four. It's at least more than the coins. We've got some Matter Munches. Everyone's favorite enemy. At least it's my favorite. I love the Matter Munches. I'm glad they've got more uh, time. Oh my gosh, like, uh, my brain is trying to wrap around this. I've never played Sunshine, Stanley, only saw Let's Plays. It's got great atmosphere. Yeah, like, it's it's visually impressive. It does run at 30 FPS, just note. Like, I know Mario 64 runs at 30 FPS, but especially after you play this game, and it's running at oh, Okay. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do some damage mitigation. Or not. I'm not doing any damage mitigation. I think the comet medal's somewhere lying out. Did I oh wait, no. I already grabbed the comet medal. I don't know why I'm thinking about it. Watch out, the Bowser statues are angry. Um, but yeah, no, Mario Sunshine, in my regard, like, I like the aesthetic of it. I also think the water effect is very neat. Um, I, I'm a little bit mixed on its level design. It's got too much, um, or too little variety in my mind. I think maybe there's a consistent tone that's not, uh, neat that it's got, but I also think at the at the downside, it's got levels that feel too um, cramped, particularly the the hotel level. Um, I, I find it's just not amazing. And uh, what was the one level near the end of the game? The um, I guess the last level, the one with the um, on the island, Yanta Village. Is that is that the one? I'm not the biggest fan of it, because the underneath area just feels so unfinished. It, it doesn't quite feel right. And then, of course, the final level. Only one Bowser level, so at least you're not refighting Bowser all the time. Although you're refighting bosses all the time. Um, it's got stuff in the way everywhere. I just, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, 
maze levels in Mario games. I feel like, I I feel like it's it's a little bit tough to, uh, I guess navigate. We'll just say, you learn it, you get there, but it kind of just feels like I'm scouting around, um, looking for all these things. Look at you running around like a little flea on a puny planetoid. No, it isn't puny. My massive new power, the power to flatten you like a space pancake. Hi there, Mr. Luma. How are you doing? Oh, he's doing a little dance. How nice. <laughs> Moral support right there. Here comes Bowser off his uh, high chair, and uh, <laughs> your Bowser's so fat, he uh, uh, sucked me into space. So Bowser's a different fight this time. He launches meteors at you, and then he decides to punch the ground. Punching the ground will break the meteors, but it'll also push up the other ones. Allowing you to ground pound them into them. Now Bowser's a lot easier to follow in this one because he's just massive. You want to make sure he doesn't punch the meteors that you want. If anything, it's nice to get him to punch near it so you can just jump right on it. Uh, also, it does change the music. It does change the music, yes. Now I'm angry. Angry. I'm peeking my mind really hard. What is going on? So now Bowser's going to try and do a bit of a fire, a fire bar, basically. A little bit tricky to follow because the crazy gravity, but it's pretty alright. Oh, oh, oh. Definitely gets you hyped, although, uh, I think my issue with these fights is that they're over a bit too quick. I think the music's great, though. It's got a lot of developments, a lot of like places that I can go to. And the big gong, the big gong of the soundtrack in the orchestra is great. Hit him again. It's two sets of two hits. It's a bit of a weird change up. But the grand star comes out of him and he just becomes tiny. Just so that Mario can laugh at his still triple Mario size. A lot more fun than Galaxy 1 fights. Uh. Yeah, I think they're here and there. My, I think they're too easy, these fights. Because Bowser doesn't hit you very much. Um, it's a lot easier to, to just launch a thing at Bowser than to try and run after him. Now I remember why you're my arch nemesis. You're so annoyingly hard to squish. Good thing I win anyway. Ha! While we've been playing, my master plan has moved on to the next phase. Tough luck, Mario. Uh, quite epic? Yeah, epic is, is the important feeling. Like, even though the fight is short... And, and easy. The fact that you still get the vibe out of the game is very, very important because it means that you can still enjoy it for what it's doing, um, even if you are a more technical player. Um, so here we are, once more. You got a grand star. As a grand star, because it's bigger and has pointy, pointy little bits on the end. And I launch the star into space. A portal to the next world opened up. Oh, wow. Bling. And a comet medal, just for show. And some coins, just for show. Well, how about that? You fought a giant monster and then he turned tail and ran oh. off, right? Well then, let's get on after him. With the power of this grand star, we can keep going through time and space, no problem. Mm. So it sounds like your special one is still with that monster, eh? Well, let's not just sit around and get an older. Let's get going, Cap'n. Cap'n? Yeah, he's a Cap'n now. So, with another grand star, we shall travel forth into a new world. I always like the idea of, um... The Mario games becoming larger and larger. You had land, then world, then... Uh, I guess they jumped into Galaxy as, like, the, the next bit, and then we're doing worlds of galaxies, which is kind of interesting, but yeah. Wow, an entirely new world. Looks like the path splits up ahead. Hey, don't look at me. The captain makes the choices, am I right? Blubber, your pants are so tight, man. Now, this is kind of interesting. We've got a little barrier here that requires 28 stars. Hang on, we can't get over there just yet. We need more juice from the power stars. Did you miss any power stars back there? Go check out some of the previous galaxies if you need to. 
this is a, I actually like the progression of this world, um, you're not going to be able to see the rest, but effectively, all the worlds are lined up here, and the barrier is right at the beginning, so, we can theoretically do, uh, I think you still have to do a few stars in order to, to get through, but it's only 28, we're at 25 right now, I'm still going to check out the rest, but, the flotatious blimp fruit, why oh, yes. Again, new world, but still, new mechanic. It's just, you know, hit after hit. New mechanic after new mechanic. And this is 25 stars, like, you know, this is a fifth of the stars. I guess, you know, still 95 more stars. So we got these little blue things going on. I love these uh, spiders because I have no depth of perception. You, you bonk them and then you kick them. Look at this guy going, the green one. It like these. I don't want the green one, I'm over here on my planet. I should have brought the green one with me. Oops. I should have actually brought the green one with me. Oh! I got him, I got him, it's all good. I love how you see the giant ramp in the world map and suddenly it's just completely like, yeah, well, it is, it is an unrelated first level, so, um, yeah, it's a little weird that the first level is like this. Anyway, Yoshi's so happy. You think it's weird as well, you can't shoot star that's while riding Yoshi. It's kind of interesting that the, the feature is kind of relegated off. I believe the second player can still do it though, so, it kind of encourages the second player. So what does this flower do? Or fruit? You eat it and Yoshi, uh, uh, he gets into inflation. Uh, let's keep this advertiser friendly, shall we? You press A when you're floating, then you can hold your breath, then you can hover in midair. So Yoshi gets very, very big. And he breathes air downwards. I believe you can hit Z and he, uh, ground pounds. Nope, you can't. You're in your dirty mind. A, A. I do have a dirty mind. That's unfortunate. <laughs> there we go. So, alas, here we go. Alas, out of the tree. I love this giant tree plant. It's like here's a here's a tiny little bit of ground, massive tree growing on it. No, she cannot eat mushrooms though. He's he's allergic, I guess. Now, I want to get up there. I appreciate that you can keep doing the flutter as well. Oh, should I show the- I should show the trick. I should show the trick. Okay, so, uh, speedrunners are gods. They figured out cheeky tricks. Um, the world designer of Super Mario Galaxy 2 is spawn, definitely. So here's a trick. Let's see if I can get it. Oh! Maybe- maybe this- Okay, uh, I'm not doing a great job of it. Did it only affect the PAL version? Did it only affect the PAL version? There was a... I, I know the Endless Flutter trick, but I'm not doing a good job of it right now. I remember you had to crouch. You had to crouch while fluttering, but there was a timing. There was a timing. I'm not quite getting it. So, yeah, this is a bit of an exploit that I'm trying to accomplish, but I'm not doing a good job of it. Um, but effectively what the trick is, is that when you do Yoshi's Flutter, you can crouch in, like, somewhere along the Flutter. There's, there's a timing, I just, I've completely forgotten. And, uh, that allows you to kick in with another Flutter, uh, higher than you started the last one. Uh, while on Yoshi, hold A to Flutter. Before Yoshi, have to give up fluttering. Press that quickly, release A, and press and hold it again to Flutter. Keep doing it, and Yoshi will be flying. Let's try and bump up on the top here, just so I can... Uh, oh. I got it once, I got it once. It's, it's a very particular timing, and you gotta... I got it once, I got it once, just for a moment. Speedrunner thing, chain 30 it does. 
I mean, once you once you know the rhythm, I think it's it's easier to see it. I'm not gonna keep trying it, but um, you can definitely use it to do some real crazy exploits, some real crazy stuff. Because effectively, you can fly. You can go wherever the heck you want. Which in a level like this, it's not too. <laughs> you can't do too much. Uh, but in uh, say the Ocean Star Galaxy, where the gravity is pretty normal, being able to kind of go wherever might mean some very interesting things. Uh, oh, I'm going, I'm going down here. Here we go. Those star bits just, oh, they're going. I think you can fall forever. Here, like, I think, I think maybe, oh, no, no, there's a bit there. Maybe if you dodge it, you might be able to, to, to dodge it. Well, up I go. I don't think I'm going to make it, so let's grab that. There we go. Good stuff. Now this crazy gravity bit, I don't know man, this part confuses the heck out of me. So, the, uh, the center of gravity is the center here, but you're falling downward. It's, uh, like around the spiral. Yeah, uh, it's, it's some weird gravity, but it's great fun and it's executed really, really nicely. And I guess that's the one bit with all the crazy gravity stuff in this game, um, and the first game, I guess, is, uh, like, it's done tastefully. There's, there's games with crazy gravity, like, uh, I, you know, Ratchet & Clank does it, uh, Serious Sam does it, if anyone didn't play the HD versions. Um, uh, there's bound to be some other ones. But it's just, like, a lot of the times, when they do some crazy gravity, it's not the most tasteful. It just kind of happens. Sonic Adventure 2, there you go. Uh, think about that, it was the same principle as getting something into orbit. Yeah, it's, it's like getting into orbit, I just don't know what's pulling you down by gravity. Like, like if, if Mario shot himself in that direction, it makes sense. Oh. A little pathway forms. Starship Mario can now advance. Mario, advance. Looks like we've got another Hungry Luma. Oh, Hungry Mouth to feed her. Not a Hungry Luma. Oops. You've got a new friend here. A friend with something special for you. If you want to check it out, just head down that pipe over there. Uh, which ear was that? Was that the left ear or the right ear? That was uh, this ear. Yeah. Let's check her out. Ah! Luma Lee, Luma Bop. 30 star bits for one spin! Welcome to the Luma Shop. Can spin a chance cube for only 30 star bits. Go into the ear. So yeah, you can feed this guy 30 star bits. And he transforms into a dice that he was holding. You only got one. I got one one life. Worth it. And he comes back yet again. So you can get seven one-ups out of that, which is crazy good, except it's a one-up. It's, you know, <laughs> kind of moot. I don't think one-ups are worth that much in this game, but that's okay. But look, a second star. I guess there was the tree. The tree was there. Tall Trunks, big slide. There's, there's two stars and we're still doing something fairly different. This one gives people PTSD if you uh, remember the comment on this one, but we'll get there when we get there. For now, let's start off. No more Yoshi. Yes. Let's see what these fellas have to say. This place is sacred. Our people brave. Green sash? Ran away. <laughs> okay. The star, courage. Our people, much courage. Our people, whittles. Uh, is this the same? Is this the same? Yeah, it is the same. All right, let's see if I can do it once more with, with a feeling. I did it with feeling last time. Oh no! I got it, I got it, it's good. <laughs> it's good. There we go. So no more Yoshi, we've just got... Go up here. Up the little... Little swings. Swings are good fun. It's kind of interesting that this area was designed for two different bits as well, but hey, doesn't that remind you of another Galaxy 1 level? 
One of them. Uh, oh wait, no. It, both of those power-ups do appear in this game at some point. We did do the B at one in one level. The B will come up. Slide. Never quit. Sharp red things. Not touch. Watch slide. Be brave. Jump in. Well, you, you got to do the slide music. We've got spinies. We've got uh, spiny plants. So this brings up uh, an interesting point. Uh, does anyone remember Sonic Lost World? The Mario, sorry, the Sonic video game from 2013. Uh, released as a Wii U exclusive, but it later got released on Steam. Um, I was going to say Sonic Colors. Like, got ported to the Switch, but it still hasn't got a PC release. Um, Sonic Lost World is a very bizarre game to me, and probably to a lot of people, because it is Sonic doing Mario Galaxy, it's doing the crazy gravity stuff. And, uh, <laughs> Wigglers are angry! It's, it's a pretty normal Sly level, it's just, uh, it's actually, it's very, um, uh, stiff as well. Like, you can't just slide off in a weird direction. You're constantly moving forward and you're kind of just leaning left and right. What a success. Oh, hi. Bravery symbol, star, yours. We judge you very brave. Hi there. Here is symbol of courage, take star. Wow. Wouldn't you know, a star. Uh, but yeah, Sonic Lost World uh, popped into the top of my head because it does the tunnel sections. It does those pipe tunnels with crazy gravity a handful of times, quite a few. And I remember one of them uh, at some point in the game. I, that game was a complete blur to me. Uh, but at one point in the game, like the slide level was legitimately horrendous. It had this one like underneath bit and it was so hard to understand what they were intending with it. it, it it's like, oh, you could, like, uh, you could do like a side jump. Or the, yeah, yeah, you could jump up some walls and then you could do like a side jump. You could do side wall running. It was very, very confusing. So I think he wants to talk to you about common metals. Go give him a listen, shouldn't take long. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not playing Sonic Lost World on this channel. I, I've got bad things to do with my time, man. Hey! You've got to be kidding me! You've got to be kidding me! What was that? What was that? What? <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me! Excuse me! That was <laughs> that was three one up sides. <laughs> ah, like many comets, comets arrive first time in galaxy. Always one comet medal somewhere. Look hard, fine. Isn't that kind of interesting? The comet medal is always in the first star. At least. If you understand what he was saying there. So what does he mean by that? Well, he means if you, you know, go back out. Really? There's no comet? You introduced that idea, but you don't actually have an example. Ugh. To the cloudy court galaxy, we go. Cloudy court galaxy is a galaxy that I think a lot of people actually do really like. Head in the clouds, here we go. Uh, but I think people really, really like this one because, uh, it toys around with the cloud, uh, flower in a much more applied way. Um, yes. It's also reusing this music from the first level. Is it a little different? It might be a little different. You can actually crouch underneath the, the, the llama. Uh, is it, it is where the cloud is introduced, right? Or was it before? It was introduced in, uh, Fluffy Bluff. With uh, which is the the monkey. So there's nothing else over here, but uh, what's kind of neat is that they've effectively introduced a bit of a playground for you to learn like some neat strats with the cloud. Particularly, I like the long jump. Uh, I'm just gonna jump a bit. I've run out of clouds, unfortunately, so those coins are not going to be mine for now. Cloud wind ride. So yes, if you pop the cloud over anywhere here, we'll get blown by the wind. Also, we have drums. Everyone likes drums. Long jump of the clouds is so broken. Oh, exactly, yeah. 
So if you ground pound as well on these drums, you make more height. Of course, if Mario does a little thing and forces himself down somehow, more height. Oh, I didn't get him. Ah, done. I also love this hi-hat here. It's a fun, like, little shimmering effect, and then... Psh, it's a great effect. They don't even do this, uh, this, like, percussion instrument thing for any of the rest of the level. They just throw it in here, so... Luma Mill, you Luma Bop, were you picking up coins? I'm so hungry, would you give me 30? No, I'm not giving you 30. Well, I'm gonna have to look out for it next time. I was thinking, it's like, yeah, I remember having to collect a lot of coins in this level. So there it is. You might be able to cheese a little bit more coming up here, but I don't think there's going to be enough. Whoop. Look at the little Octoling. There has not been many Octolings in this game. Oh, unless. Ah, oh. <laughs> but I'm thinking like, well, I, I skipped about like three on the way there. Oh, my face. Yeah, like as long as you're not going- Oh, my face- Oh, that's actual death. Well, we're really not getting that Luma. We're really not getting that Luma, because lose a life, lose the coins. What a shame. What a shame. <laughs> The worst part as well is, uh, that was, like, bouncing on the trampoline and just not being in the right spot at the right time. Oh. Whoa! I, th I think maybe I was off the platform a little bit on that one. I, I don't know what's going on there, so... So I've got a bit of a... Uh, I guess an interesting topic I wanted to bring up uh, this week. Um, there hasn't been anything too crazy in, in gaming news, except uh, some guy on 4channel, I'm gonna say 4channel because it's on the uh, the safe boards. Oh. Let's see if I can get this fun bit down here. Yeah. I love this little, little hidden, hidden one up there. Uh, but some guy on 4chan, uh, has released a, a streamable link of a of about two minutes of gameplay of uh, Duke Nukem Forever, as in his source build from 2001, uh, an actual playable build. That game, uh, for, for reference, um, was uh, it had. I think they announced it in like '98. They announced it pretty shortly after Duke Nukem 3D in the grand scheme of things, um, and uh, it was kind of just mention, I don't remember too much going on, but uh, it has a trailer from 2001 that showed off a lot of like really neat features, uh, particularly you know, looking like a first person shooter from 2001 in the best way possible. Um, and then kind of radio silence, 3D realms died off, the assets were seized, the game was kind of going through a lot of crazy dev hell, and then Gearbox Software bought the rights to Duke Nukem, including the uh, what they had on Duke Nukem 3D, and, uh, oh sorry, Duke Nukem Forever, and they basically stapled it together and turned it into Duke Nukem Forever as we know it in 2011. Uh, but no one really liked Duke Nukem Forever, but Duke Nukem Forever had a lot of interesting parts about it, particularly it had components stitched together from Unreal 1 and Unreal 2 slapped into it, but I... People say it's running on Unreal 1, and I'm like, nah, that, that menu and that loading screen, it feels so Unreal 3. It, it, it certainly feels like they've pulled some stuff into Unreal 3. Um, but yeah, no, they did stuff, yeah, so many times, you are correct, and yeah, it came out in 2011. Um, and, uh, and the worst part is, uh, I think Yahtzee said it best in his, um, in his review of it at the time, uh, you can feel 15 years of first-person shooter technology age throughout the game. They have, um, like, parts where it's the, um, the, the quirky 90s shooter, the, the, um, the, 
the dirty space shooter. Also, hey bro, everyone left me behind. I had to hustle to get up to here. So hey, guess what? I decided to look for Power Stars too. If you see me out there, come say hi. I can help you save the universe. Uh, Luigi is um, used uh, a lot more liberally in this game. Basically, Luigi will show up at the beginning of a level and you can choose to play as him. It's, it's never required. But it's definitely a real nice um, thing that you can you can have, yeah. Uh, and yeah, people didn't really like Duke Nukem Forever because it was so much of a mishmash of a game, and myself included. I I felt it's got its bits. You'll definitely remember sections of it. Everyone remembers that whole bit at the beginning of the game where you get shrunken down. Everyone remembers the monster truck part. Um, I don't remember much else, but I remember there being a weird laser gun. Uh, so yeah, you can pull up Luigi here, and uh, you can play as Luigi. You want to switch? And yeah, you can just say, yeah. and he jumps. Well, screen pans down, and then it's as if you just started the level, but you're Luigi. Luigi does play like Luigi from Super Mario Galaxy 1 uh, as the bonus thing. Uh, this upset several people who were very sad that they couldn't play the exact same game. Uh, <laughs> sorry, how do I phrase it? Uh, this upset people who played Mario Galaxy 1, and they were like, oh, you know, I, a bonus unlockable at the end of that game was you could play the whole game again as Luigi, and you'd unlock one, one little star at the end of the game. Really not that much, you'd have to play the game twice to, to get it, it's, come on guys, really. Um, so in this game, Luigi is there just as someone you can just play as whenever. Um, at least if he's there at the beginning of the level. Uh, there is one coin in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back for it. Oh yeah, I, I think people are, were really looking for like just anything to criticize, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. I, I think like there's, there's a terrible degree of fanboyism that everyone has with, uh, just things in general. I think not everyone, sorry, but a, a select vocal few people on the internet. Um, like both games are good. It's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, if anything, this means I can show off everything in the game without having to necessarily play through it twice. I've got a mate who um who complains about the uh the green stars as well uh, later on. It's just like oh, they just they just slapped in there. There's no rhyme or reason. It's like oh, permanently unlocking Luigi on save after beating Final Bowser. Um, oh yeah, you can still do that. But what I mean is specifically like um oh I. I in, in Mario Galaxy 1, it was uh, once you beat the game uh, with 120 stars, uh, it goes, you can now play as Luigi, and you can uh, swap your save over. Also, <laughs> Luigi is very slippery. You can um, run a, a Super Luigi Galaxy save on the side, and where you basically play the entire game all over again. That was, that was the first game. Did I pick up enough coins leading up to here? Let's point my off the screen. I did! I picked up 34. Cool. Will you give me 30 coins? Yes, I will. I've got a huge coin craving right now. Uh, you must play again as Luigi or you want to unlock Star 241. Yes, yes. So the, the grand finale galaxy in Super Mario Galaxy 1 is locked until the end of Luigi's 120. You can go back to Mario after you've gotten Luigi's 120th star. But effectively, you've got to play through the entire game twice in order to get that 121st star. In this game, don't worry, it's not like that. Don't fall in. And then you gotta get the silver stars. I like the look of this poop, even though it looks incredibly basic. Um, like it's, uh, it's, it's the same strat they use in Mario Sunshine, where, um, it's, a uh, it's like a surface decal that's, um, I'm not too sure if it's an animated texture. See if you can find the, the looping parts. It could be, um, geometry shader based. Like, it could just be a shader pattern. Or, or like a, like a, like a, yeah, a, a pattern gen- oh, Let's not go too low here. These guys are very, very happy. Where's that last one? There it is. This is a cool, like, little Luma section. Just again, it's 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 a combination of mechanics in a really, really nice way. And of course the star goes, yonk is nowhere. Yeah. 
Bravo! You did it! Luigi is happy, as always. So what do you get as, like, actually doing Star as Luigi? Nothing, really. It's, it's just for funsies. Although Luigi is, arguably, a little bit easier to play as. Like, or maybe he's a little harder, but he's a little easier. Also, did you see that? A, a ghost has appeared in the level. Also, finally, finally. So how about, let's let's handle the Prankster Comet, and then let's go back. A Prankster Comet has been spotted. Prankster Comets can transform a galaxy into a wildly different place. Come to think of it, you've been collecting Comet Medals, right? Collecting lots of those Comet Medals make more Comets appear. That's, uh, kind of. Uh, you, you, having a Comet Medal means the Comet can appear on the level. It, do it doesn't necessarily mean they're more frequent. Hey bro, I'm all over the place these days, exploring the universe. Next time you'll see me out there, talk to me and let me leap into action, okay? Catch you later, bro. If anything, it's kind of nice just having Luigi be in the gameplay sometimes. It's good fun. Let's, uh, let's be a good bank user. He didn't even get any interest. What's a fun round number that I've got? 994. Brilliant round number. Baba! I don't know what the rate on that uh, interest is, so... Well, I'll, I'll check out the ghost in a little bit, but right now, let's back out. Looking here. If anything, actually, I, I think I remember they show you which galaxy gets the comet every single time it shows up, which is a lot better than Galaxy 1, where it just kind of appeared somewhere. You had to be on the lookout, or you had to leave your the hub and go all the way back to the start. See the bit, so, yeah. Spiny Rainbow Romp. I know, right? It's not a specifically named prankster comet. That's right, they've just taken this area, chucked a bunch of spinies and a rainbow star and call it a day. So, this Comet Medal's a little bit different. They're all still little challenges, but they involve uh, at least some fancy challenge. <laughs> oh gosh, don't do that. Uh, so we start off, we gotta get all the Spinies, and you can only defeat the Spinies with the Rainbow Star. Oops. I just wanna get that corner. Even though they're using the, uh, the, uh, Manta Ray music. It's not too tricky, because most of these spinies are lined up, but very awkwardly lit near, uh, ledges. Also, they don't go over there. Oh my gosh. They don't go uh, over to where the, the star was. Well, yeah, kick all the spinies, and there you go, there's a star. So you can't go over here if you want some star bits. Uh, the star bits. There's not much more I can say. Oh, you're not even able to get up there. They've, they've, they've made it illegal. They've actually made it hard illegal. Oh, Mario's struggling hard. Stuck in the mud. Uh, but yeah, no, so the Duke Nukem 3D, uh... Source leak? The guy is teasing that he's gonna leak the source. He hasn't actually, at least last time I checked, all he had was the trailer. Um, I think he did, I think he did a couple of screenshots in the thread as well. Um, but the gameplay, what was the gameplay? Well, it looks like 2001 Incarnate. It had the wonderful blue, just like, hard colored, like, uh, gooey going on. Um, it had, uh, well, I guess I am returning to this level, technically. Is, am I just gonna, like, tick off all the all the comments in the stream? I guess I am. That's how it's gonna be. We get a little bit of progress, and then not much progress after that, so... But yeah, you, we'll start we'll start getting um, more of those galaxy-completed symbols as well, showing up. Cloudy Court. Yet again, but this time with a comet. Remember when the mid-2000s came around and Gears of War brought us the deluge of grimy, grim, and dark cover shooters? Yeah, I, I feel like Gears of War was, um... I've never played Gears of War, but, uh... I, I feel like it's a wonderful... Um... 
like precursor into a terrible trend. But granted, there's a lot of franchises that follow those terrible uh, trends, just even when it wasn't Gears of War. Everyone remembers this from Space Jump Galaxy, I've never played it either. Um, there's, a, there's a PC remaster of it on the Xbox Game Pass, uh, if anyone ever wants to play that. This is pretty easy enough. Also, again, is a comet that kind of does its own thing in the same area as the level, but it's not actually, like, just the same level all over again. It's at least something different. And if anything, it, it would be playing like its own... Oh, did, what the heck? This had a drop come down from my ceiling. That was kind of weird. Like a, like a water drop. That's, uh... That's a bit ominous. <laughs> Blender dies an unfortunate uh, ceiling drowning. I've, I've got to keep an eye on that. But uh, what's the time right now? 9.35? I'm going to look back at my stream. I'm going to tell my landlord exactly 9.35. This drop of water came out from the ceiling. Uh, is it raining where you live? I, I have an apartment above me. So, that'd be very weird. Oh, oh, this thing as well. This thing as well. This is the one. So I think an infinite number of, um, of, uh, these cosmic things appear here. So how about let's hit it once, just for funsies. This is- that's the fun bit. This is the fun one that they showed off on the DVD. And you can actually see some of the star bits just died off because you can't have too many on screen. But that's a- that's a fun one to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess it will shape the genre for a while. Um, but yeah, it's- it's interesting, and especially in the realm of first-person shooters, it's so easy to just see the trends. To just see, like, here's a game, it just influenced all these other ones. Go check your ceiling now. Um, like, it was only one drop. I can't see a, um, any, like, where. Potentially the people are buying. I can't see any where right now. If I see another drop, I'll definitely, like, be like, oh, okay. Um, when I moved in, there was a, a line I... Okay, by the way, as well, it, I've, I've gotten to a bad habit of doing hand gestures while I'm doing Let's Play commentary. It's, it's, there's no, no one to, look, to gesture to. Um, so here's a here's the thing. I gotta show off the ghost. Oh, that. Grab a chair and a flashlight and check the ceiling. It's a well lit ceiling, but yeah, there there was like a um, like a it's not like a water line, but it looked like a crease on the ceiling. So let's just head into the first star again. Just I know I've got all three stars here, but I just want to show it off. So it said a ghost has appeared on this galaxy. When you take over Luigi again, by the way. Yeah. Uh, when it drifts, there has to be a lot of water in the ceiling already. Yeah, that's the bit that's got me a little concerned. Um, I'm pretty sure... Who was the ghost? I thought the ghost was at the beginning. That's the part that kind of confused me just then. There's this galaxy, right? Uh, better check now. Water damage is terrible. It's I I I'm I'm doing tenant work as well, so I I know, I know it's a terrible philosophy to be like, oh no, I can wait. But like, it's uh, it's definitely something where it's like I can I can check at the end of the stream. Might be condensation from Peters as well. I don't know. What is it, what is the uh, etiquette with a uh, with a uh, ceiling? And what I guess here's the question: like, if if it's actually happening, like, what do I do? I guess I can you know get them to you know try and investigate and go ah okay you're pouring water on the floor. Where is that ghost? Why are you getting me just doing a speed run? There's some fun long jumps with Luigi, I'll tell you that though. If I have a sink over flying or is it something they haven't noticed? Um, that would be that would be kind of bad, a sink over flying. Um, you stop hours of water damage depending on how long you play the stream. Uh, my streams usually go for two hours, so I usually finish um, 
You gotta watch out for that bird, by the way. Um, ground pounds directly onto it. Well, I don't know where the ghost was. By the way, you 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 see that uh this cloud up here? Yeah. Look at this. It's just up here. Um. So yeah, I I, I would be streaming for at most like uh, an hour more. But I'm probably also just going to stop when I get, like, 40 stars. Oh, it's going to catch me out. I don't know where the, where the thing was. I just played the same level again instead. Although I played, I played the level as Luigi, I guess. So I got that, but... Oh, there's a transparent star. I don't know where the, where the ghost was off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't see any, any mark. Maybe it is... Maybe I was just sweating. Who knows? Th there it was again, by the way. A ghost has now appeared. Who knows? Did someone say Comet? Pranks the Comet has appeared. Also, Luigi says this every time you do a star with him. Every time. So uh, the game has been saved. So let's head out uh, to another prank to comment. Oh, yes, I'm just going back here. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give it a check at the end of the stream. Uh, but yeah, I. I've always felt like, as a tenant, it's, it's a very, like, weird thing, because, yeah, like, what if they don't, you know, they don't open the door? Ah, so here we have, here we have an actual purple coin comet. Also, purple coin comets will casually be just in the rotation of regular comets. Um, you'll be pleased to know, as well, you can get 120 stars before you beat Bowser at the end of the game. <laughs> You've got... 57 seconds, because the clock starts counting before you even get control of Mario. And you get these little comet guys going at the same time, so it's it's a double trouble. Or triple trouble if you think purple coins are bad. But there's no there's no um uh exploring purple coins. Like there's none of the not freeze flame, not beach ball, none of that going on in this game anymore. Uh it's pretty run of the mill, the uh purple coins are very challenge heavy. Uh, which I think is probably for the better, because I, I wasn't the biggest fan of finding every single 100 coin. Which, by the way, as well, while we are on the subject of Mario uh, Sunshine earlier, um, one bit I absolutely hate about that game is the, um, uh, the blue coins. So every level has, in that game, has 30 blue coins. And every 10 blue coins you collect, you have to then talk to a guy in Delfino Plaza, and he trades you uh, a shine. That is... Uh, one, or that is 24 of the nine, of the 120 shines behind the blue coin collectibles, and the blue coins are just, they're just littered around. There's no reason to it. Some of the purple coin levels in Super Mario Galaxy 1 pretty relaxing, dude. Yeah, I, I don't mind, I don't mind them for, especially like Freeze Flame, um, like that, at, or Beach Ball, Beach Ball. Freeze Flame's kind of annoying, because you got the bit at the back, and if you don't do the bit at the back first, then it's a bit tense, because then suddenly you've done all, you know, you've got 96 coins and you're missing this one little bit. Um, the beach ball's pretty alright because it's not too easy to fall off. Uh, the ring galaxy, and the ring galaxy's alright, but again, same deal with when you're dealing with, um, uh, the, uh, that one, like, egg shell part. But not the center, because the center is an egg, isn't it? Uh, the, the one with the water and the tree, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Um, yeah, I forgot the name of it as well. I know the one you're talking about. Dig a legs, Daredevil run. Okay, we can't have all the comments be some unique challenge, so they've still brought back the Daredevil runs. Um, so for reference, the Daredevil runs were you have one hit, your health becomes a one. But they're nice enough to send you directly onto the, the level. Now, I don't think I took a hit on this guy at all. But, who knows? I might make this my first hit. So, same, second verse, same as first. I guess the thing with these stars is, uh, yeah, it's the same star, but 
it's a bit harder. And yes, he does fart. I thought I was going crazy last stream. I was like, I'm hearing a fart. When he drills this thing through the ground, he farts. Bonk. There we go. Now he's over here. I hate how those things hit his legs as well, if you don't get them while they're going. Easy money. Easy money. He's it, not that tough a boss, but sometimes the loose hit does come in. But it's not too frequent, so... And around to the other side, to grab another star for a galaxy... We did a while ago. It was it was quite a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now the Duke Nukem 3D thing, or I keep saying 3D, the Duke Nukem Forever thing, is very exciting. Um, Super Mario Galaxy 2 really is a game where they realize the best thing to do is combine 2 and 3D. Oh, definitely, definitely. I I love the mixture of of um the the parts because I just feel like there's a lot of really neat ways to combine the mechanics into a 2D uh, perspective and also I feel like it was around this time that people did start realizing that um, 3D wasn't amazing for everything there, there are some things that just can't be conveyed in 3D you cannot make like the platforms feel quite amazing in 3D you get stuff like Mario 3D Land which came out just after this and definitely was in development um, but effectively they'd have to slow down the game a little bit because they gotta add a little bit of... And also the geometry in that game is rather simple. Um, which is not a downside of that game, it's a, it's a great game, but it's definitely one where, like, you can feel the limitations. Uh, good 3D was still norm. Also, yeah, we gotta get all the crabs in 60 seconds. Now the crabs are a little annoying, but you get a rock. And yes, why not? I have one of them, or a couple of them give you one-ups. It's just a chillin' one-up. Uh, good 3D was the norm. Yeah, definitely there's, uh, there was a, um, uh, like a setting-in period. Or, not a setting-in, but a, a teething issue with 3D. Mario 64 is a great game when it got 3D right, and a pretty okay game at the time. Uh, well, actually, it was still pretty good overall. Um, what is going on with the camera there? Uh, it was a pretty okay game, um, by today's standards when, when the 3D was not quite working out the best. Uh, oh boy, oh boy. Am I gonna do it? I don't think I'm gonna get it. Nah. Oh, Mario died. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 in 2010, when actual 3D had stopped improving in leaps, uh, since then it had only been in small steps. I think around the time retrograph and stuff like that. Yeah, you definitely had the, um, the indie influence of, uh, stuff like Super Meat Boy and Braid, um, and, uh, what was the other game in, uh, Fez, that was the other one, indie game in the movie. Um, but there were other ones, um, N plus, oh, N is, that was some legitimate game slowdown, by the way. Uh, N is, like, a classic one for me, and actually, you had like real good quality flash games. Maybe I'll do a maybe I'll do a video um, on uh, on wonderful flash games uh, that I remember as a as a wee young laddie. Um, all right, I think there's three left. It's that one. There's one there. Oh, he's he's dashing. He's dashing. Got it. Alright, all good, all good. Uh, sometime around 2007 or 2008 were really good Flash games. Yeah, like, you definitely had the really quality ones. I think everyone is gonna scream Angry Birds. That wasn't even a Flash game. That was, uh, that's a Unity game. Um, yeah, Rip Flash. It, fl Flash as a, as a platform has obvious problems for security on computer. Um, and obviously I, I appreciate that we've moved past the, um, the plugin based days because it means that nothing's gonna, you know, absolutely slog down your system. By the way, you like how this one star, just casual galaxy here, this one idea galaxy gets a star? Oh, Toad is happy as well. 
letter addressed to the baby Luma has arrived. <laughs> to my lost Luma, I hope this letter reaches you in bright spirits, little one. This should be some help to, on your journey back to me. May the stars shine down on you. I wonder who that laugh was from. Wow, there were 50 star bits attached to the letter. No return address, but I hope I get to meet this mysterious person soon. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, so let's go back up to that. Um, but yeah, no, there were, there were some real good Flash games. I, I think, um, the, the highlight ones that I can remember was obviously, um, uh, Crush the Castle. What was it? Castle Crush? No, it was Crush, Crush the Castle, not to be confused with Castle Crashes. Um, I was a real big fan of, um, uh, what was the one? Gemcraft is one. I really want to get it on Steam. I really want to get Gemcraft on Steam, because I absolutely loved that. There were so many great tower defense games on Congregate. Um, Desktop Tower Defense was another really, really good one. Um, yeah, Ang Angry Birds stole the idea completely. Uh, so, by the way, yeah, here's a purple coin mission, but, uh, Let's check a time limit on it. This is the perfect comet to do because it's like, oh, you've got to, you've got to maximize how fast you go through this terrain. You can only like swing your, um, you know, swing your Wii remote like every second. You've only got 180 seconds. You don't get too much time to keep doing it. Oh, I'm gonna do a far jump. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think of another one off the top of my head. Um. There were some decent point-and-click ones as well. I remember, like, one of the, um, escape room ones. Uh, I, I, I can't, I can't go ahead without saying, like, anything by X-Gen. X-Gen did really good stuff. Not a load, stick RPG. Um, both of which had seen super versions. Decision was a game I really liked. Which one was Decision? I remember, okay, I also remember being an absolute fan of, um, Who's the guy's name? JMTB02? Was it 0205? No, it was 02. Um, so he did such games as Ball Rebamped and uh, Four Second Fury, uh, which I I really loved his um, you know dedication into that. Um, Ball Rebamped is like just like a, a secretly like nice game I enjoyed. Um, Decision was a complete top-down zombie shooter. Oh, it was like, um... What was the the one... It was called... Box or something. There was, a, there was one that had, like, very boxy characters. And, uh, lots of good rotational sprites on it. Um, and it was a top-down shooter as well. Zombie, like, board shooter. Gosh, one minute already. Jeez. This level goes by quick. Jeez. The best part as well is that this is the same level. It's just got purple coins. But, like all good purple coin missions, it must come to an end. Okay, I'm playing with fire right now. Alright, playing it safe. Play it safe. <laughs> uh, must be another one off the top of my head. The idle games are great. I used to idle a ton. Um, Trimps, actually. Trimps just got on Steam. I think Trimps actually might be an older one because it's like a HTML5 kind of game. Rebuild 1 and 2. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's bound to be some more as well. Um, try and pull up something from the mini clip days. Prankster Comet is alright. I'd get another Prankster Comet. Can't believe it. So. Creeper World. Oh, Creeper World. Like, I never played Creep. Actually, I did play Creeper World 1 um, on Conquer Great way back when. Um, and then I I had completely forgotten of its existence. And then I, I played. I just saw Creeper World 3 on Steam, overwhelmingly positive. And I played through all three on Steam. Um, and Creeper World 3? Legitimately, like, that guy is so impressive. I really want to play, uh, 4, um, because I'm just like, that, it's, it's so incredibly addicting. That game is so amazingly good. Absolutely tremendously good. So, I, I would tons recommend, uh, Creep World 3. Uh, Tall Trunks Purple Coin Slide. Also, you can do as, you could play as Luigi on this one, which is a bit of an interesting move. 
I like how Luigi's always an option there. I played both 1 and 2 for a little bit when 3 came out on Desura. If you remember that. Oh yeah, Desura. Yeah. Yeah, oh, dude, yeah. 3 is just so well done. It's a little bit uh, shame that his uh, little spin off game, uh, Particle Fleet, is not quite as amazing. It's alright, but yeah, it, it just doesn't have the feel. There's something organic to how Creeper World works. Uh, for reference, yeah, I lost some purple coins around here. I had 140. Must have dropped them down the slide here. Could you get those coins back for me? Even just 100 of them will be fine. I'll make it worth your while. I got someone down at the end of the slide. We'll take care of your deal. So, at least they're nice enough to tell you, yeah, there's 140 uh, coins down the slide. Unfortunately, they come fast, man. They come fast, so you better be on your toes. Dude, okay, real talk, if Retro Achievements did this set, they would totally stick a get all 140 coins. Is it even possible? No, I can't, no, it's not possible. They would, they would stick a very high number on there, at least. They'd also stick time limits on a lot of levels, if anything. Maybe put a time limit on every level. Yeah, it's the same slide you know and love, but, uh... Purple coins. Uh, switch to proper 3D was so amazing. Oh, dude, definitely, yeah. And the, I mean, I guess the best part is mechanically Creeper World already was in 3D. Because the the creep would uh, have um, depth to it. So it was always there. Um, if anything, that's why Creeper World 2 is a bit of a weird one to, like, understand. Because, like, doing it on the side was like, there's the... Yeah, like, it's... it's everything is coordinate coordinated on the 2d um the 3d fluid it's just a representation of that still same 2d mechanic though um so yeah only 105 uh, coins i didn't get a ton but i saw that one up i'm not skipping it even though the one ups get removed hero symbol hero dude i love the little tree things it is mechanically different now oh oh can you like blast fluid up into the air and it's like or something. It had, it had waves. Waves existed. But, yeah, no, I guess I've got to play, I've got to play Creeper World 3. Or 4. Ah, oh, dude, now, now you're getting me hyped. Now you're getting me hyped. A prankster comment has appeared. Wow. Hey, bro, I'm all over the place. Cool. <laughs> oh, I caught him blinking. So... I think moral of the story is, uh, like, there's a lot of brilliant Flash games. There were a lot of, like, great developers at the time. And I think I love how, like, you know, a, a lot of game devs, especially, when you give them free reign to do what you want, so a lot of indie devs, you usually hit your passion project really quick. You have to be careful if your creeper pool reaches right to the edge of the platform, you shoot a mortar and it'll spill over now. Ah, okay. Oh, wait, the platforms aren't, like, three-dimensional on top of other ground, is it? Because that'd be kind of cool. So Hightail full speedrun. we still got speedrun comments as well. This one's a little different though because they've, they've chucked uh, meteors at you and the platform's broken. So again, really appreciate that compared to the first game, there's at least some substantial differences between the level, or at least sizable. It's still roughly the same level, but it's just nice to have it a little bit different. As well as, uh, you got this fella over here who's... Yeah, doing like your waves deflect back and hit more. Ah, oh, ah, oh, okay. Because, yeah, it used to just be like they wouldn't extend out. Um, which didn't really mean too much. I appreciate this as well. Control Yoshi, you can... Yeah. Alright, here we go. Up the slope. I'm heading over to the right now because there's really no reason to keep going up to the top. Unless there's a penguin up the top who says something different, that'd be fun. Uh, actual waves like water. Okay, now I've really got to play Creep World 4. You got me curious. What is it? Creep World 3, Cook Serve Delicious 3. That one's got a fourth game come along as well. I really love, you know, there's a, there's a hand. I. <laughs> Okay, real talk, I'm usually very critical of indie games, and yet, like, all these Flash games and all, like, this period, I always find, like, there's a great degree of just unabashed quality that you get. Or not quality, but, like, you know, dedication towards just one fun mechanic. 
there's a lot of indie games nowadays that just seem to, like, you know, not fully realize their idea. But a lot of Flash games at the time provided, you know, just as much entertainment, just as much content, but yet it felt so much more complete. And a lot of the time, you weren't even paying for those. A lot of those people did it as a passion project, um, which is crazy. Maybe they'd run a PayPal? But, yeah, no, they, they gave you so much time on that level. That was three minutes, I had a minute 15 left. Crazy. Um, but yeah, no, they... They were so full, full of passion props. They properly focused on a few specific gimmicks. Exactly, exactly. And I guess that's the thing with a Flash game. How long is a Flash game? You know, it's 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 twice as long as half a Flash game. It's it, it, The length is entirely arbitrary, which means the developers really can, can choose to stop when they want to. By the way, we're free. No more comets. Well, I mean, there's a couple of... Oh, no. Okay. Was that three more levels that need comments? I'm just gonna be doing all these comment levels for the rest of the stream. Really short flash games. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Fancy Pants Adventure is like one that everyone remembers. Um, mostly because the guy took forever to design his levels and then he released like some unfinished ones. Pee Wee Piranha Speedrun. Uh, yeah, we're doing a speedrun on the first star again, but... Uh, this one's a little different because you gotta top up your time. You start off with, uh, like 20 seconds? 20 seconds, let's go. I think it's quicker down the pipe because you get at least two shots of... of a... Uh, here. There we go. I love this music, by the way. This music right here. It's just dramatic. It's so good. Um, yeah, you can... Uh, make a small flash camera around again. Exactly, exactly. Was this music in the first game? I don't think it was. I think it is new in this game. I love how to make a space theme as well. You just do like incredibly dramatic like sustains. Oops. Hopefully I don't need that extra 10 seconds there. Now they, they kind of rushed a little though because I'm pretty sure there was another planet somewhere in the middle but that's okay. Speak. He's a drippy boy. Now here's the thing, I took my sweet time on this guy. Yeah, yeah, there's a fair bit of... Oops. Okay, alright, oh. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Hit him on the butt. Okay, uh... Let's just, let's just get as many clocks as I can. What is this, Crash Bandicoot? Now I'm angry! Actually, I, I feel like I mischaracterized how to defeat this boss as well. You can... So you can you can hit his egg, which breaks the egg, but you can continue hitting the egg. Ah, oh, really? Really? I just walked into him too many times. Dang it. Dang it. Done. And you gotta do the whole thing again. I feel like I'm gonna really cut it for time by skipping both of those. I had like 31 seconds last time and now I'm going, now I'm going straight. I'm going straight there. Let's skip the cuts and let's go for it. Oh, I wanted to do a long jump to... Good, but not. All right, let's get him right on the clean bit. Right on the clean bit. Oh, there we go. Nope, I mischaracterized it wrong. You just gotta hit his egg twice. Cool. Cool. I don't understand the mechanics, and I'm misreading the visual cues. Did I say this was my favorite Wii game, and I'm just getting everything wrong? It's been a while. It's been a while. But I remember having the most fun with this. Can I? Can I at least say that? I've got to need that extra 10 seconds because i got to pick up the star in the remaining time. The average game journalist... Oh, exactly, exactly. Dude, the average game journalist would be bronze starring this whole game. 
Oh no, they were nice. They stopped the timer for you as well. Because the first game kept the timer going after after the boss was defeated and you hadn't gotten the star yet. It's very brutal. I think everyone at one point has, you know, run out of time in that interim. It's such it's so disappointing, especially for the four minute ones in that game. Uh, but yeah. Man, what is it with game journalists and just like not being good? It's weird. It's like, dude, like like, I mean, I don't like being paid- I'm gonna make so many, so many brash comments. I'm gonna have Lucy O'Brien coming up in my tweets again going, Hey, what'd you say? I had, I had a engagement with her on Twitter. Not, uh, not, you know, not married. I said some, like, ages ago. Ages ago, I had, like, a chat on, like, how someone didn't disclose something. And, uh, we reached a compromise where it's like, oh, she kind of explained it in, in decent ways, but it was like, could have been a bit better, so. Haunty Holes Galaxy, a glimmer of bulb berry. That's right. We should, we should show off some more gameplay mechanics. How about that? So it's the Mario World ghost house, except there's no house in this one. There's actually no house. Um, but yeah, yeah, so. Oh, that's good fun, so. Uh, I should probably just mention one thing with the Duke Nukem Forever thing. I had this topic written down, I just wanted to, to kind of mention the thing. The uh, best thing, they ditch, like, uh, they ditch, like, all power-ups in the mechanics. Was, actually, there's only one power-up they ditch from the first game, and that's the, um, Ice Flower. Every other flower, every other power-up appears one somewhere. I appreciate, though, that, like, you know, apart from some of the more typical Mario designs, by the way, these guys really love their ground pounds because you can break the... Oops. Yep, I- because the fire flowers already happened. The B- This one's a tricky one. No! <laughs> the spire- the spring does appear at one point. The spring will appear at one point. I can guarantee that. I'm very certain the spring appears. Just once. Oh, the B- the B and the fire flower? Um, I'm pretty sure the boo exists. I'm pretty sure the, the, the ghost mushroom exists at one point. It's- they're so under- underused though. I- but I do remember them existing just once. I love having this theme, because the, the whole point of Mario World is that every- every song had, um... Had that- that theme going on. <laughs> this is like- this is, uh... Well, one of two uses of that theme, because we had the the um the overworld, the overture music on the uh, Hightail Falls Galaxy as well, so. It reminds me uh, if anyone's played Earthworm Gym, level five. I know that's using um an actual I forgot who who composed the, the music. I'm gonna say Muzorski. I don't think it is. Maybe it is actually. We got a speedy one as well. The speedy one is good fun. Because I'm pretty sure the comet metal is like somewhere along here. It is? It is Muzorski! Ooh! Ooh! I'm glad I got that off the top of my head. I don't know the name of the piece though. I'm never good with classical piece names because it's usually, um, you know, Concerto and E minor, Opus 15 or something. It's, it's not Concerto. It's a. Uh, is it a symphony? It's, um. It's very brass heavy in that. It's not exactly the piece. Um, you, you know what I mean, the... That one. Blue Mushroom is in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Yes, yeah. I, I was thinking that. I can't... I don't know if it's in this level. Maybe it... Maybe it is in this level. Not this star, though, because this star is about the bulb mushroom. The bulb fruit. So the bulb fruit effectively creates a... Like a wall of light or something. A cone of light, if you will, around Yoshi, and it starts shrinking. So the platform exists. It will exist for as long as Yoshi's got the power up. It'll slowly wind down, but you can really easily tell um, what the uh, power up is. If you're actually curious enough as well, you can uh, skip the door <laughs> by just jumping past here. Uh, but I love this effect. I'm an absolute sucker for how this effect is done. And it's so easy, it's a fragment shader. It's just like, for every pixel, um, you know, if it's within this range, you know, draw it. If not, then it... Whoops. Whoops. 
that should have been perfect opportunity for me to practice spring as well. Yeah, yeah, spring as well. So the only one that's not there is the uh, the ice flower because the fire flower we mentioned the bee has already shown up. Um, I also love the paintings as well. It's a nice touch. Um, the bee as well has shown up. I'm just gonna do the jump. Stuff the door. Stuff the door. Don't need the door. Now, unfortunately, this power up is used so briefly because the level ends right about here. I, I love this panic as well, where they get the, the thing to suck on Yoshi's face. It's preventing you from eating another fruit. Well, yeah, no, it's a real simple effect, but it's such a fun, like, thing to just look at visually. It seems complex, but trust me, it's just, as long as you got the power up, you can stand on the platform. It's, it's mechanically as simple as it is. Only Ice Files Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, I feel like it's a trivia point. And the Red Star, yeah. <laughs> the Red, the Red Star's a surprising one that they never put back in, because I think the example everyone always likes citing uh, for an unused mechanic that gets used in the sequel is the Ice Flowers in, I'm oh, sorry, the Ice, um, the Ice Flower, but the Ice Arrows in Ocarina of Time were relegated as just a, a bonus item you'd get at the end of, uh, um, I forgot where exactly in, um, in that game. But all they did was there were arrows that just dealt a bit more damage. Uh, whereas then Majora's Mask legitimately had a mechanic where you'd shoot arrows at, um, at water to create ice platforms. Red Star was also in 64 as the wing cap. Um, yeah, the wing cap is, is an interesting... Like, I, I, the wing cap is used so well in that game, and I'm kind of glad Nintendo has never tried to recreate it, like, at all. <laughs> They've... Legit, Mario 64 is sacred. They're never going to remake Mario 64. They're, they're gonna port it, they, you know, they had Mario 64 DS, but they're never going to, like, you know, do what they did with 3D Land, and they're gonna do what they did with, um, Mario 3D... Uh... World? Not 3D. 3D World's kind of its own thing. But 3D Land, where it's like they take the Mario 3 concepts um, and power-ups. Um, did they do it with the world? Yeah, the Red Star is just the victory lap uh, in Super Mario Galaxy to remember the Great Successful One Cap. Yeah, it, it felt like they had the idea, but they it, it just couldn't figure out like how to slot it in neatly. So they gave it as, as a... You know, a Sunday drive kind of level, where the, the level inevitably gets beaten. Um, I'm kind of amazed they even did keep it in, because yeah, it's a, it's a one-time use mechanic. Um, and Nintendo is typically not one nowadays to put in underused mechanics. They're really good at going hand, so it's just the same, it's just the same one. Let's, let's do it once more with feeling. This is, this is going swimmingly. I, I took so long at the beginning. It's kind of pointless by now. Although I was probably like a second and a half behind wh where I was before, so... Whoop. The booze won't hurt you as long as you don't look him in the eye, okay? Tee hee hee. And there's a big boo. But you can look at them and then they don't hurt you. Wouldn't you know, it's the complete opposite of what the sign said. I also like how they introduced the shrinking platform there. Right out of the first game, I'm pretty sure they've appeared on another level. Um, everyone likes a, a moving platform kind of level, you know? Nice, calm, chill, moving platforms. And we got more Mana Munches! That's right, two levels of Mana Munches to stream. Amazing, I love the Mana Munches. We've also just got holes in here. Lots of booze, though. You gotta watch out for the booze. Give them a, a, a peer in the eye. And away we go to... This wonderful conveyor belt. Again, this is the same... Well, I was gonna say, this is a little bit different. Like, I think the rendering is the exact same kind of methodology. Uh, but they've got to do a little bit of fancy work for the hitbox as well, just to allow you to fall through when the mana munch is over it. Um, but still, it's it's neat. Uh, I guess also uh, they've got to be able to render... Well, I guess it's just a depth test. Or rather, not writing in the depth buffer. So, yeah. I, I am saying graphic rendering techniques, but 
This effect, as cool as it is, is incredibly simple to pull off. I would totally say, here is an example of doing it, but I, I got no idea. So, the boos are chasing you. And you've got a... I, I can't... I honestly can't tell by the camera if there's a gap there, but... Why did they put a cross at the end? What's with the cross? Yamato, what are you doing? Oh, well, so... Anyways, last thing I want to say about the Duke Nukem Forever stuff. Uh, I think leaking source code of old games is a real, like, interesting part of preservation. Because, um, the Mario 64 source code leak was a, a perfect example. Where it's like, people took that source code and have done real crazy optimizations, improvements, mods, whatever the heck. You name it. Uh, not just Mario 64. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's bound to be quite a lot against I know Pokemon... Um, hasn't had, oh, Pokemon Diamond had a source code leak. The other ones had disassemblies of the ROMs. So that's more people taking the finished product and back reversing to make it something a bit neater to, to look at. But, um, but I remember Diamond Pearl had a full source code leak and had like two years or, or a year of Git history. So, um, if you go on the cutting room floor, they've got like at least people trying to take snippets of the source, like... Uh, they 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 latch onto a commit. They move their head to a commit, build, see what that build was effectively, and then you know add the next commit, do the build, see what goes on. The real old Pokemon games, as far as I know, the source code is assembly. Anyways, there's definitely a finished product in assembly. I know that they did do work in assembly. So so if you could find the C source code that they had, it would not describe the full implementation of the game. I know that they would they would 100% be writing some stuff in assembly. It could be inlined in the C code though. You can write assembly instructions in your C code. Um, so it could be C code that invokes assembly like that. Um, maybe. But uh, I'm trying to think, was there another source code leak? Uh, off the top of my head? I can't recall, but source code leaks are really interesting. It sucks for a company because it's your own intellectual property and really sucks as well if you're still using that code somewhere because uh, that that gets kind of kind of annoying, but um, uh, but for for people who want to preserve games and media, like taking your game code and just going open source. Actually, no, sorry, I got one good example, one great example. Um, someone has also uh, released under permission, under GPL permission, uh, or, no MIT permission, MIT permission, I believe. Uh, the source code to the engine, to the Argonaut engine that they used to make Carmageddon. Uh, Croc and the 3D Movie Maker programs. That source code is out there. The guy's got absolutely no, like, you know, he's he's released it as is. But you can download the source code, and if you know you know how, you can probably fix that. So yeah, um, check that one out as well. You can uh, look around for it. The Argonaut game engine. You'll probably find it under uh, 3D Movie Maker source code. You'll probably find that somewhere. But yeah, no, that's um, that's. That one was cool, so I'm really glad that um, some of these games, some of that code is, uh, you know, being released out to the world, because more code is always good. Can you run Linux on mainframes? You can run Linux on uh, a, lot of, a lot of things right now. I actually, I bought a NAS over the um, uh, last weekend, um, and I, I finally transferred a lot of files off my drive, uh, off my SSD. I used to be kind of hoarding all my um, videos on it, because I record to it. It's, it's nice, you don't have to worry about discs uh, problematically going out on you um, but or hard drives going out on you but uh, uh, yeah moved all the all my old videos to my NAS freed up like a terabyte on my computer um, I still got like the the original videos I uploaded to YouTube back in 2007 as well I, I never get rid of those it's good memory core cool memory um, point is the NAS itself they let you SSH into it and just run whatever you want. The only problem is the thing's only got half a, uh, a gig of RAM. Or half a, yeah, half a gig of RAM. So you can't run too much on it, unfortunately. But, uh, cause the storage is all the stuff you've inserted and it's a quad core CPU. I'm pretty sure you could run some basic stuff on it. Um, and it's got extension support, so that's neat. Um, this is a, it was a Synology DS220J. It was like 250 bucks from ShopX. It was 
It's pretty alright. It's actually pretty okay. Uh, some student went like it can't be that hard and rewrote a small part of the Linux code. It's actually handling the hardware level and then immediately ran native on mainframes. Ah, that's neat. That is really neat. That's Linux is well laid out to allow people to interject as much as like as many parts as they want. That I don't think Windows is um, like as bad as people say, but because it's closed source, you can't tell. Um, there's no source code leak of red and blue, so. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's bound to be bits of C somewhere in there because a lot of people are not crazy enough to program their whole game in assembly unless you're Chris Sawyer and you're writing Roller Coaster Tycoon and you're an absolute madman. Um, even back in the day, people would write C, they'd compile it into assembly, and then they'd tweak the assembly. They would manually tweak the assembly to, to fit space if they, could, if they had to. If they didn't have to and it ran fine, there's no issue, um, so, yeah, insane stuff, so, yeah. Alright, so with that, I gotta check my ceiling. It didn't drop again, but I, I, I am gonna check. I, I'll do, I'll do what you said, so. Uh, until then, uh, I, let's do, just do a small recap as well. So, in this stream, I didn't get too far. Uh, old games from the late 90s are crazy, crazy complex. Uh, yeah, they're, they're complex because they're... Well, I, I think they're, they're complex because they go so low-level technical. L larger games now are complex in high-level concepts. They, they combine so many things together, and they're doing stuff like, especially uh, ray, ray tracing and all that stuff, I find um, the best integrations of it are very impressive. The best integrations of everything is, is very impressive. Unfortunately, you get games like Doom Eternal, which are really good for how they do their rasterized rendering and then they lump in like the same ray tracing everyone else is doing so the late 90s um definitely yeah yeah rollercoast tycoon is a great one i think quake 3 is very impressive um a lot of um aspects as well and i guess just any of the quake stuff any of john carmack's stuff is amazing he's a, he's a great guy to look at so anyways just to recap this the stream uh so we did cosmic cove swam around a bunch skate on ice uh ho -Oh flew around on him uh, fought Bowser, and then, uh, ran on a tree, clouds jumping around, doing stuff, and, uh, spooky, spooky platforms, spooky platforms, and as well, a lot of comets to fill in the space. Uh, there's still six worlds, by the way, or seven worlds, actually. <laughs> there's a lot of levels still to go, and in fact, I've probably been spending a lot of time just clearing out some of these other stars, so, uh, we still have a comet medal on Bowser Jr.'s fiery flotilla, so... Note that there's still a comet available on some of these. Uh, one hour and 50 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit short. I think 20 stars is a good even point because then it means that I'll be able to end the last stream at a like a reasonably good checkpoint. Um, so yeah, and I gotta check my ceiling anyway. So, anyways, with that, I would like to thank you all so very 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 much for watching so if you did enjoy this you can just follow on twitch or subscribe on my youtube where i am perpetually fluctuating between 1769 and 1770 subscribers i think a lot of people subscribe to me way back in the day realize they don't watch me and they unsubscribe and then a net person comes on and, and subscribes so i'm like oh that's that's cool so i saw my account go from 89 followers on twitch to 90 so i think you probably follow at some point more love thank you very much for sticking around and, and the fun combo this, this stream as well uh if you missed any part or you want to watch part of it back uh the twitch file is there for two weeks and then twitch deletes it because twitch is twitch uh but i re-upload these to youtube in slightly higher quality um because uh yeah you can only upload at six megabits to twitch but to youtube you know record at 12 megabits make a high quality video so anyways stay safe everyone eat your greens don't stay up too late uh and uh, remember to... Oh, who won the F1? Don't tell me, actually. You're gonna spoil it. I haven't watched it yet. All I saw was the grid walk. It's hilarious. Watch that instead. Or both. Alright. Have a good one, everyone.